Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Christophe Auger. I'm a professor of economics and finance. Welcome to Mastering Money. This is session one. What is money? A simple story. Credit versus money. The learning goals. Uh, to understand what the true origins of money are, what the various kinds of money have been, what is the difference between credit and money, and compare the economist's story versus the anthropologist's story on how money emerged in human civilization. Well, let's just first look at some pictures of money that has been used throughout history. You can see there cattle, uh, shells, uh, of course, coins like this Greek coin. This stone is a stone uh, that originates from the uh, Pacific Island of Yap uh, that was used there. Uh, this coin is a metal coin from China from which the term cash has been derived. And you can see all the different type of, of money that I have existed here. And the last one being um, electronic money or bitcoins. If we look at the particular dates, uh, initially we have livestock and cereals that are being used, then seashells. Uh, first money uh, made out of metal is in about 1000 BC. The birth of modern coinage in uh, uh, Turkey in Lydia with uh, minted coins with the effigy of emperors is in 500 BC. 800 AD, uh, the first uh, uh, paper money in China. And then the pure gold standard era in 1821 to 1914. Bretton Woods, which launches the gold exchange standard in which the dollar becomes the dominating currency. And 1971, the collapse of Bretton Woods, and which leads to the modern uh, monetary system we know uh, today with uh, national currencies being fiat currencies, meaning that uh, the currencies derive its value from the trust that the people have in the governments issuing the currency or the money. And then 2008, the birth of cryptocurrencies with the Bitcoin. In archaeology, what we find is we find traces of what's called credit. Now, the difference between credit and money is not that big, but we're going to look at a little bit later at the definition of what makes an item, a particular item, money. First, we have to recognize that credit uh, is something that's existed way before the items that were used as money. And in fact, we have uh, inst credit instruments that have been recorded in archaeology going as far back as 30. 7,000 years ago, one of them being called the tally stick. <clears throat> and so what is a tally stick? It's a piece of, uh, of wood, initially made, it was a piece of bone, that was carved uh, with the amount of a loan and the identity of the borrower, and then was split in the middle, and each party to the loan, the lender and the borrower, received their half of the stick, which uh, allowed uh, for the verification of the veracity of the of the transaction, and uh, made fraud uh, much harder because, of course, you had a piece of wood that matches the other piece of wood, and it, it, it's a unique uh, match. So, if we look at uh, uh, money, money uh, has particular characteristics. <clears throat> which economists define has to be a unit of account, that is, it's a benchmark, a reference. It's got to be accepted as a means of transaction or payments. It also has the characteristic sometimes of being a more or less good a store of values. You have, uh, for example, wheat has been used as money, but wheat is perishable, and if it was not stored properly, then it would rot, and so therefore the value would be completely lost. Gold is supposed to be uh, the ultimate store of value. And let's look now at why was money invented. And we have the version of the economist that dates back to Adam Smith in his uh, treatise on the wealth of nations in 1776. 
uh, Adam Smith talks about the fact that labor specialization leads to the appearance of bar the, the rise of barter. Why? Because uh, uh, instead of being uh, multivalent and polyvalent uh, and having uh, being able to um, provide to their own needs in multiple ways, uh, the people now uh, become specialized. So you have somebody who just um, makes shoes and somebody who just cultivates apples and uh, or grows wheat. So the needs for exchanging goods um, to reflect the basket of, um, of, of staple uh, needed goods for living and, and beyond, uh, that needs uh, arises out of that. So for example, Jean grows wheat, Patrick grows apples, and now the question is how many apples need to be uh, traded for uh, wheat? But from the observation of specialization of labor arise the issue of double coincidence of wants. So how are you, how are you sure that um, you know, uh, Jean wants uh, uh, apples uh, and Patrick wants wheat? So the two uh, persons have to meet and their wants and their needs have to coincide for them to trade. <clears throat> so Stanley Jevons and Carl Menger uh, argue that money then must have been uh, invented to simplify barter because barter is very costly in terms of informational costs and search costs. Search because you need to find the right matching person who has the needs that you uh, that matches uh, what you have, what you can supply to them, and they can supply uh, what you need. And then informational cost has to do with the pricing system. So we're going to talk about an example of the informational cost of barter and um, one example in which there will be barter and the uh, other example where there will be uh, money in the economy like the euro. So imagine you have an economy with uh, four goods. You have wheat, apple, sheep, and an axe. And if you are trying to uh, uh, measure, account for the number of prices that you have to remember, now you have to remember the price of wheat in terms of apples, in terms of sheep, in terms of axe, that's three prices. Then the apples in terms of sheep and axe, that's two prices and so on. So imagine that you know that uh, 100 grams of wheat represents two apples and one fifth hundredth of a sheep and then one tenth of an axe. That would be your prices in this case. And the number total of prices is six, whereas if every one of these items has a unit price in euros, uh, then each one has a unique price and the number of prices equals the number of goods, so that's four. So it looks like the complexity is not that much uh, of a problem. You have six prices to remember versus four. That doesn't seem to be very daunting, but let's generalize this. Imagine that you have N goods to exchange, little n, and that you have uh, to track uh, a number of prices, capital N. How many prices would you have to track in the barter economy? Well, it looks uh, like, for example, for good one here, that you would have n minus one prices to remember, which is the n minus one goods, and then so on. For the good two, you have n minus two prices. If you add all these together, you have the formula down there, which is the addition of all these uh, lines, all these rows, and it would lead to this result. If the number of good in the economy becomes large, let's just say 1,000, the number of prices that you have to remember is about 500,000 prices. That's a lot of prices, that's a lot of information to remember, especially if the prices keep changing daily, okay? Whereas in an economy uh, with money, each good has its own price, and with N goods, you have the same identical number of prices. So the informational cost is huge in terms of our economy. So the economists say, this is why, this is one main reason why money was used instead of barter. 
Now let's look at the anthropologist version and their version is very different. They're saying that the economist version of the story doesn't hold water. David Graeber in particular um, uh, collects um, you know, references in research done in anthropology across many different civilizations, past and current, that, have, that are existing or that have existed on the planet. So this is recorded uh, history and field research. And what he says is that they, the economists have it wrong about barter. In fact, all the history of civilization that's recorded uh, shows that what we're going to call simultaneous barter or spot barter has never existed. Spot barter means, yes, I have my apples, you know, and then you have your wheat and let's exchange them right there on the spot. Well, the anthropologists say it doesn't work like this. In the majority of civilizations, they used credit. Credit means that they gave something with the expectation of having it returned under another form with an equivalent value. So let's say you have this scenario here. You get, you visit me. I see you admire one of my cows. I offer you my cow. You take it willingly and uh, happily. But at the same time, you realize you have a moral debt that you need to reimburse later to me. But there's no hurry. It doesn't the, the barter doesn't have to happen simultaneously and instantaneously. Conclusion, the anthropologists say money cannot have a reason because of the problem of double coincidence of wants because you don't have that problem. You just go and take what you need from your neighbor, from the pe person of your community, and then later on your neighbor may come back to you and take what he needs from you. But there is not this urgent problem of solving the coincidence of wants. So why was money created? I have posted online uh, a couple of articles by David Graeber, which I will ask you to read, and then you can see in an assignment what uh, his uh, answers uh, are, and maybe come up with also your own version of why you believe money has been created. In summary, the historic evidence points in this direction. Spot barter has never existed in all documented recorded civilization and thus cannot be the source of money creation. Money was first a unit of account for recording loans, not a uh, uh, instrument of transaction. In fact, the record shows that if you go as far back as uh, Sumerian and Mesopotamian civilizations, uh, you have the first formal instances of credit where uh, uh, loans are being recorded in a uh, benchmark unit such as the grains of wheat or silver. Thus credit appears at least 2000 years before the first tangible monies uh, that we know of. And additionally, the notion of interest rate, charging an interest rate, that also appears much later, much after the creation of credit, which is not what the economists tend to think. The story the economists tell about the paper money first being created out of uh, uh, or based on credit is not correct. While it is true that when the economists look at goldsmiths in the 16th century, these did issue papers, which were IOUs, that were backed by uh, the gold uh, that were in the vault, sitting in their vaults. Uh, and so they were essentially the first uh, implementation of modern uh, or, or, or paper money that was backed by gold. Uh, but this takes place in the 16th century. And we know that paper money existed way before that in China, for example, and for different reasons. So thank you very much for your attention.